Okay, everybody, let's freak out together. This may actually be happening on the first flight of SpaceX's Starship. And I'm I'm super excited. I'm super pumped, but I'm going to freak out if that actually happens. Because I've told people numerous times that I don't think that Starship is going to launch. This is for the orbital flight test, by the way. I don't think SpaceX is going to launch a booster and a Starship and try to catch the booster on the tower arms. So... Now SpaceX released some stuff for the FCC. There's a document out there via the FCC that shows that that may be happening. And I'm going to show you how cool this is. This is the old FCC document. Okay. This is the old FCC document. This is for the launch and landing of the booster. So as you can see on the left side, where the green sort of like lassoy white thing starts, um, that's where the uh that's where the booster would start that's boca chica beach that's spacex's star base it does a little loop comes back lands in the gulf of mexico right so that's cool that's cool enough right we would get to see the most powerful rocket ever built launch and land nearby in uh the gulf of mexico super cool this is different this is way 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 different i'm gonna zoom in for you right there south padre island in that area super heavy booster profile launch profile launch it out oh there's no more lassoy loopy thing it just goes out and then comes back in to a possible catch arm landing what the heck is happening okay this is new this is brand new this was just released the other day and i want to share this with you now let me know in the comments below what you think of this. Do you think this is a good idea? Because I'm kind of on the fence and I want to have a conversation about this because I think doing something this early on in the development stage of literally the most powerful rocket that's ever been built, ever been flown, ever been assembled. It's pretty scary if you think about it. SpaceX for the future is going to be moving operations of flight to Kennedy Space Center. We all know that. 39A is going to be the area where they're going to be building a new star base. Hey, take a second, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. That tells YouTube that you like Starship content. If you want more Starship content, that's how you get it. You hit the subscribe button, you hit the like button. YouTube will push out all the Starship stuff to you. They'll push out all the SpaceX stuff to you. And also leave a comment because that's how YouTube knows that you like to interact with these kind of things. So thanks. Appreciate it. Helps me. Helps you. All right. And they could possibly move on to uh, 49, I believe it is, in the future. So this is where they're at right now. This is uh, SpaceX and NASA over here. On the right side, uh, top is the Artemis launch platform. And then right next to it is where they launch Falcon 9s and they will eventually launch Starships from. And then they have another pad, 49, but it looks like this right now. There's literally nothing there. It's not built out. There's a bunch of swampland out there. There's vegetation, just a couple roads off Rogers, Ro Rogers Road out there. There's literally nothing out there. So it would take them years to develop this site, years to get it ready, just so they could start building this out there they have to take care of all the environmental reviews spacex and nasa would work together to make sure that everything is properly vetted before they actually move to this site but for now they're down at boca chica and this is the site again as you can see a lot of wetlands they'd have to mitigate the damage to the environment out there and it would take them a long time because as we know the environmental process for boca chica and the starbase facility right now it's been a headache for SpaceX. It's taken them a really long time to get this together. And if they have to do this again over at uh, Kennedy Space Center for this new 49 pad, it's going to take years. So I think what they're going to be doing with this, um, with the current Starship, um, Ship 24, Booster 7, I think what they're going to be doing is, I think they're going to be... Um, flying it out, but I think they're going to get close to the landing pad. This is 49. Again, this is the pad for now. And as you can see in the background, there's another pad close by. Further, 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 far enough away that they're not going to, you know, put anything else in danger, which is really great. So this could have been their R&D facility, 
but the structure of the way that things are tested out there, it just takes a long time to get anything tested. And SpaceX was just like, let's just build in Texas. It's the easiest thing to do. But if they're gonna launch this thing in Texas and they're going to get this booster, this giant booster, this picture's courtesy of SpaceX, if they're gonna get this gigantic booster back to the pad or near the pad, that's going to be pretty amazing. Now, do they have to mitigate those circumstances with the FAA environmental review? So what they did already, there's an environmental review for the land that SpaceX is on. But do they have to do anything for the water that SpaceX would be landing in? And maybe that's why they changed this. That's possibility that they changed the flight profile because they may have found out that it could be years to uh, to go through an environmental process for landing one of these rockets in the Gulf of Mexico. It's possible. I'm just putting that out there. I don't know. I don't know. Let me know if you know, because I would love to know. Let me know if you know about that stuff in the comments below. Now, SpaceX, of course, has a lot on their plate. They're building up uh, the, the launch tower. They have those 75 things that they have to get done with the FAA. It's for the environmental review. They also have to continue testing for uh the booster and the um you know and they also have to continue testing for the ship for the next few weeks and they do have some stuff coming up and there are some road closures coming up and i want to show you that so road closures coming up um july 11th from 10 a.m to 10 p.m it could possibly be um you know more more testing of the pipes the tubes if you will and also pressure tests, cryo tests, things like that coming up soon. So that could be a possibility on Monday, Tuesday, same thing. Um, Wednesday, July 13th, 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. all week until Friday. So of course, we've talked about this a million times, but Friday, Saturday, Sunday is off the table for SpaceX testing at Starbase because the local government, Cameron County government and the Brownsville area and the South Padre area, they all said, we need this beach open in the summertime. We need this beach open on the weekends because people like to actually go down there and hang out. So if you're blocking off the road for these people, uh, for your testing, that's not cool, SpaceX. So that's what that was part of the environmental thing too. Like, don't block off the beach, man. Like, let's just get these people down there to enjoy their coveted beach time access. So that's another thing. So every Friday, we miss out on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday of testing. Monday, July 18th. If you think it's going to be launching in July, I don't think it's going to. I've, I've talked to so many people um, in the industry. There's people that are sort of hesitant about saying when it will launch, but there's other people that are like, look, man, it's not going to launch till next year. It's not going to launch till February of next year because there's so much stuff to do and there's so much testing to do. Every static fire test is going to take two to three days. Um, Every, you know, every cryogenic test takes a whole day. Um, could they do more pressure tests? Yeah, they have to stack this thing up. Could take two or three days just to stack it. St it'll stack in one day and it might take them a day to process that data and make sure everything's fine, make sure everything is sitting well together. Let it sit there for a day. Let it sit there for 12 hours and let it just see what happens and then gather some more data and then possibly do a cryogenic test with it with both things stacked on top of each other can the booster withstand the weight of the starship that's another thing they have to stack it up and make sure make sure that it fits properly a fit test with ship 24 booster 7 i think that's coming somewhat soon i think that's coming somewhat soon uh ship 24 it needs all the other stuff too uh, it needs to go through another cycle of pro or process, a whole cycle of, of tests. So that's going to be a while. Uh, so what I'm going to guess, I'm going to guess this, and I've done this so many, so many different times. I'm thinking September. I think it's September. But there's a lot to do there. And we know for a fact that SpaceX is kind of in a rush, kind of in a rush because they want to get this thing done. Is it going to launch before the SLS? I don't think so. But that's all right. Because think about it like this, super heavy summer. That's pretty cool, too. We have an SLS launch. We have a Starship possible launch in the summertime, too. Um, I'm thinking fall more so, September, October. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. And I hope, I hope we get one sooner than later. 
but as you can see there's there's so much to be done but this flight profile seems pretty crazy to me flight pro profile seems pretty crazy do they have to get um some sort of regulatory approval to land this that close to the beach in boca chica because if anything happens to the fish the fish and wildlife uh department would probably flip out you know if a if a booster lands near the orbital launch mount it just has a rud right there sharp metal flies into the gulf of mexico cutting up everything in its way um and, and of course you know the water will dampen the pressure of the landings but still sharp metal at the bottom of the gulf of mexico possibly damaging marine life that's not cool so there may be other circumstances here that spacex was thinking about when they did this new fcc thing i just want to bring it to light so everybody knows what's going on because there's going to be more information about this coming out soon and I'll keep you up to date, of course, because that's what I do here at the Space News Pod. So make sure to subscribe to the channel. Make sure to like this video. And if you want to become a member of the show, it really does help out. So thanks, everybody, for being part of the show. And let's do a little uh, as we do and everything. There we go. So these people have helped out the show. And there's more people than this that have helped out the show. But here are some of them. Thank you so much for all of your support. Thank you for the time you spent here on the video. And I appreciate you. Take care of each other and yourself. And I'll see you next time on the Space News Pod.